The goal of the examination of the mouth is to examine the condition of the oral structures and to find out if and how the patient can make oral and pharyngeal movements. During the entire examination, one has to pay attention to if the patient shows any spontaneous swallows or attempts to swallow. I stand in equivalences to or slightly lower than Heike's eye level and I involve her hands by asking her to hold the beaker with water. I start to look at the inside of her cheeks. I keep her head and jaw supported. This jaw support grip also gives me the opportunity to feel if the jaw moves when Heike moves her tongue. I show on the outside of Heike's cheek where I first want to look in the mouth. The wooden spatula has to be wet. I place the spatula on the inside of the cheek behind the musculus orbicularis oris and look at the mucosa. Does it look healthy? Are there any remains of saliva or food? Do the teeth look healthy? Then I take the spatula out and Heike gets the opportunity to close her mouth and swallow. Now I show with my finger on the outside of Heike's right cheek that I will look here and I watch out for the same things as on the left side before. Now I want to look at the soft palate and here it is important to place the spatula correctly on the tongue. To illustrate Heike's tongue, I show here on my hand. I will place the spatula on the front of the tongue and then I will push the tongue downwards in order to see the soft palate. Inside Heike's mouth, I push the tongue downwards and ask her to say ah. ah. While Heike says this sound, the soft palate should lift symmetrically. Furthermore, I look for remains of saliva or food on the soft palate. Now I examine the movements of the tongue outside the mouth. For this I use a straw in order to give Heike a clear goal. With the straw I touch the tip of the tongue and ask her to push the straw forward with her tongue. While she's doing this, I observe if the tip of the tongue becomes slender and if it comes forward symmetrically. With my right hand, I support the jaw so I can feel if it moves a little with the tongue, which is normal. Then I touch the tongue with the straw and afterwards on the lower lip. I ask Heike to find it with her tongue. I always touch the structure that should move, in this case her tongue, and then I touch the structure she should move the tongue towards, in this case the lower lip. I help her close her mouth to give her the possibility to swallow. Again, I touch the tongue and then I place the straw on the left corner of her mouth and ask her to find it with her tongue. I do the same on the other side to see if Heike can move her tongue towards the straw and afterwards I place the straw on the middle of the upper lip. I observe if the tongue moves selectively upwards with a stable jaw. Sometimes patients try to compensate for a lack of selective tongue movements by extending their neck and pushing the jaw forward to keep the tongue upwards. Now I want to examine the tongue movements inside the mouth. I ask Heike to place her tongue in her cheek where my finger is placed on the outside of her cheek while her lips remain closed. Then I place my finger first a little bit higher up, still on the same side, then in the middle of the cheek again and then a little lower. This sequence of tongue movements is similar to functional cleaning movements, for instance during eating when we remove remains we feel on the cheek. I repeat the same procedure with placing my finger on the outside of the cheek and ask Heike to find my finger on her right side. 